Good morning, professors and the audience. We are going to start our morning sessions and keynote speech sessions soon. So please be seated. And our guests uh, outside also please be uh, seated. Uh, please come in and sit. So, um, please allow me to uh, introduce myself. My name is uh, Ken. I come from uh, Marine Technology Center, UTM. So, uh, today, this morning, is a technical session, so we do not have uh, any special MC sessions. <laughs> uh, uh, so, I will, I will try to share a bit uh, this uh, morning session. Uh, also, I'm, I'm also very proud to be entrusted to give an introduction to our keynote speech. Uh, keynote speaker, uh, Mr. Trevor Pepe. Mr. Trevor is the CEO of Royal Institutions of Naval Architects, um, RENA. And he he was, when I received his uh, his CV, I feel very surprised because uh, he was an uh, officer in the Royal Navy. <laughs> so, uh, and he, he was a naval engineering specialist and has very uh, wise experience of seagoing and show appointments. So um, he was a graduate at Royal Naval Engineering College, Manhattan, and served as a minesweeper in the minesweepers, frigates, destroyers, and aircraft carrier. Wow. <laughs> After that, he is a charter engineer and fellows of the RENA, an, insti an institute of marine engineering, science and technology, IMRS, and institutions of mechanical engineer, I I'm a key, I believe. And now he is a chairman of the councils of the confederations of European Maritime Technology Society. Mr. Trevor Beckley is has a priority to develop the roles of the institutions as an international organization. And he expands the institution activities and the memberships, particularly amongst the younger members. Yeah, I, I was benefit well from that. <laughs> uh, in the careers of the naval architectures. So he, he considers that the institutions has a very important role to to links in between the professional society and the academia. So um, I would I would like to invite Mr. Trevor Bukris to give us this morning keynote on the titles of the roles of the professional society in promoting success in the maritime industry. Mr. Trevor, thank you, please. Good morning, and thank you for that introduction. It sometimes helps to remind me of who I am. <laughs> um, the theme of this conference is sustainability. I would like to talk about the sustainability of the maritime industry, because I believe without a successful industry, it will not be possible to sustain the environment as we would all wish. Now, I'm sure I don't need to tell you that today the maritime industry, global maritime industry, in most of its sectors, is experiencing challenges the like of which perhaps most of us have not seen before. And I'm sure you're all aware of this. It's therefore not surprising that when I visit universities and colleges and meet students, they ask me what are their career prospects, um, because they too are aware of the present state of the industry. Can you hear me at the back? Yes. Take it away. Okay. <laughs> I'll switch it off. Um, okay. In my experience, if anything will go wrong at a conference, it's IT. <laughs> you can hear me in the back without the microphone. Good. Well, had I been asked that question by students 10 years ago, I would have told them that their career prospects were very good. 
with shipyard order books and freight rates at their highest in many years. Um, but today, of course, with the effect of the global financial crisis, um, I can no longer say that. But I will say to them that, yes, they do have a very promising career, an enjoyable career, but they too will have a part to play in helping industry to recover, um, to meet the challenges it faces, and to recover to the level of activity and prosperity uh, that it has known in the past and that we would all want. And those students, I say, will have a key role to play in that recovery. Well, this works. A key factor in the success of the maritime industry, I believe, in meeting those challenges is innovation. Innovative thinking in all sectors. And by innovation, I mean to bring on new ideas, to introduce new methods, to make changes, to invent and to discover. Such innovation will continue to require commitment and, of course, investment. But perhaps most importantly, it will require people with the knowledge, the understanding, and the professional skills needed by the maritime industry, both today and in the future. The maritime industry, of course, is, is very dependent on technology. And it's in technology that has been, has been and will be, I believe, the greatest development in innovation. I believe the professional role of societies have a key role to play in ensuring that engineers in the maritime industry have the knowledge and the understanding and the professional skills to achieve that innovation. And of course, in referring to the maritime industry, I refer to those who educate, who train, who carry out research, as well as those who design, produce, maintain, and regulate. Cooperation between all those sectors, I think, is another key factor in ensuring the success of the maritime industry. And professional societies, I believe, have an important role to play in helping to achieve this. But in order to examine how professional societies can promote the success of the maritime industry, I would first of all take, like to take a wider look at the role of a modern professional society. When my own society, the Royal Institution of Naval Architects, was founded in 1860, its objectives were to promote the art and the science of naval architecture. I suppose today we talk about form and function. Its main fun function at that time was to enable and encourage the exchange of information uh, relating, at that time, to ship design. And, of course, access to information is essential to the professional development of any engineers, and certainly those in the maritime industry. This was achieved in 1860 mainly through the publication and discussion of technical and scientific, scientific information through its technical papers. And in this way, the institution was able to influence and contribute towards furthering the standard of maritime engineering. The institution also gave advice on the education and training of engineers, um, which of course is critical to achieving and maintaining high professional standards. The institution also gave advice um, on, to academics on what was needed in order to achieve the base for those industrial skills. And whilst those fundamental aims very much relevant in 1860 are still very much relevant in 2018, I believe that today professional societies have a much wider role to play in the, in the education, the training, and the professional development of engineers in the maritime industry and in doing so, will help to promote the success of the industry. So, what is a profession? Well, even if you're not members of a professional society, I know many here are, if you're an engineer, then I'm sure you would call yourself a professional engineer. But what is a professional engineer? If I look at the Oxford Dictionary, to quote the Oxford Dictionary, it tells me that a profession is a vocation or a calling, um, especially one that involves some branch of advanced learning or science. Uh, of course, a body of people who are engaged in that profession. Um, amongst those key factors which distinguish a profession and therefore a member of that profession is the requirement for it to have a governing body to which, regula which regulates its members. This governing body will set standards of professional competence as a condition of entry to the profession and therefore the achievement of professional status. The 
the governing body should also encourage and assist its members of that profession to achieve and maintain those standards. This governing body should set and enforce standards of ethical and professional conduct to be observed by all members of the profession. So I believe it's the role of a modern professional society to be such a governing body uh, for its members. I also believe that to be considered as a professional engineer, then it is necessary for to be a member of a professional society and accept its authority as a governing body. This would not be questioned for a member of the legal or the medical profession, so why not engineering? Logically, therefore, as a professional engineer, to be a professional engineer, an individual should belong to a professional society and accept its authority. Membership of a professional society should be dependent upon achieving professional qualification. Um, demonstrating the achievement of minimum standards of knowledge, understanding, and professional competence as a commitment, and also a commitment to maintaining those standards. Um, we, as you are aware, we are an industry that is constantly evolving. The catalyst for change may vary, but essentially it is an evolving industry. And for those who have not yet achieved those standards of professional competence, which the institution has set as its standards for entry, there should be a commitment towards achieving those standards. Recognizing the wide range of activities which an engineer in the maritime industry might be engaged upon, the professional society should define the minimum standards of professional competence that be achieved by all its members. As a governing body, a professional society should have clearly defined procedures for determining whether those applying for membership have indeed achieved those standards of professional competence. Such procedures must be transparent and consistent if the governing body and implicitly the professional engineer is to have credibility and respect. For most engineers, the education is a means to an end, not an end in itself. Education should provide the knowledge and the understanding that will form the basis of the professional skills that industry will require, that those professional skills will be gained through training and experience. And therefore, a professional society should define the standards of academic achievement necessary to underpin the professional competence required for membership. After graduation, engineers will seek to gain professional competence through training and experience. However, professional society should recognize that it is the achievement of professional competence rather than the route or the time to achieving it which is important. Such a route to professional competence may include an improved academic course followed by a period of training and experience through a company graduate training program followed by a period of responsible experience. However, a professional society should recognize that professional competence is not simply the achievement of a formal academic qualification and a formal training course. The professional society should recognize that professional competence can be achieved through experience rather than through a formal academic qualification. It's self-evident, I hope, that the an engineer's professional development does not cease after he graduates or indeed at any time until he stops working or she stops working. The professional society should place an obligation upon its members to take all reasonable steps to maintain their professional competence. However, the professional society should also encourage employers to recognize their role in training their engineers in continuing their professional development. The expertise of a company, which is a key factor in its success, is the collective expertise of its engineers. Access to achieving and maintaining co professional competence is essential um, if the access to technical information is essential to achieving and maintaining professional competence if the engineer is to maintain that competence in the face of this evolving industry that he or she is a part of. And such access to information may be provided through us by a professional society, through its publications, its conferences, and its local meetings. However, the responsibility for continuing professional development should rest with the individual. The commitment and necessary action to maintain the professional competence is a prerequisite for being a professional engineer. Continuing professional development and being a professional engineer are synonymous. The modern professional society should provide a link between academia, 
individual engineers and industry, all of whom may be considered partners in promoting the success of the maritime industry. Professional society also has a role to play in providing a link between maritime industry and society. Society being those who use what the engineer designs, builds, maintains, and regulates. We look first of all at uh, professional society and academia. For most engineers, as I said, education is a means to an end. And that end is the needs of industry, using the term in its broadest sense. For its members and its links with industry, a professional society is in an ideal position to advise academic institutions on the professional needs of industry, and therefore the academic base which is necessary to properly fit the engineer to achieve the professional skills required by industry. How then should a membership of a professional society, by its engineers, benefit industry and promote its success? Membership should identify professional engineers by substantiating their professional competence. By helping and encouraging engineers to achieve the professional recognition through membership of a professional society, a company strengthens its reputation for quality. Membership should enable engineers to make the most of their, to demonstrate that they are working to achieve validated standard professional competence. Encouraging their engineers to achieve professional recognition through membership of a professional society shows that the company's faith in their abilities and its commitment to making the most of the company's most, most valuable asset, its people. The standing of a professional society should be such that employing members of that society, its customers can be assured that they're dealing with a company that is so concerned about professional standards that it's chosen to have the quality of its engineers independently evaluated. By employing professionally recognized engineers, members of the professional society, the company implicitly demonstrates its own professionalism, thereby improving its competitiveness. The access to up-to-date technical information is, but through a professional society um, will ensure that a company's engineers are amongst the most well-informed people in the industry. And for any company that wishes to expand its knowledge base, employing members of a professional institution is a cost-effective way of doing so. Encouraging its engineers to achieve membership of a professional society will therefore give a company a competitive edge, strengthen its future, and develop its internal knowledge base, and should be seen as an investment rather than a cost. Those benefits will be achieved, best achieved, by professional societies and industry working in partnership. So what are the professional society and the individual engineer? A professional society today must recognize that modern engineering is usually a team activity to which individuals bring their particular contribution to which their education, their training, and their experience has fitted them. They may be primarily concerned with innovation, uh, education, training, or experience, in the management of existing technologies at peak efficiency, or in the application of those technologies, all of which contribute to an industry's success. But what benefit should a professional institution provide to its members who are members of that engineering team? which in turn will benefit their companies and the maritime industry. Membership of a professional society should be recognized as a benchmark of professional status that is recognized and respected by other individuals, by industry, and by society, and thereby demonstrating the individual engineer's worth. A professional society should provide its members with the opportunity to keep up to date with developments in the technical field. The, industry, the knowledge which they gain from their membership goes straight back into their company, therefore an increasing an individual's value to that company. All engineers should recognize that they have a duty to support and help shape the future of the industry of which they are a part. Membership of a professional society should provide engineers with the opportunity to do so. 
it's a natural desire, I believe, of individuals to want their skills and their achievement recognized by their colleagues, by their employer, and indeed by society. But it's just as important that an individual should be able to gain that sense of pride which comes from doing something to the best of their ability. Gaining professional recognition through membership of a professional society <coughs> should not come easily, but should provide a sense of great personal achievement. Membership of a professional society should make a real difference to an individual's professional development. The requirement for membership should be the acknowledged benchmarks of professional competence. When the individual achieves these standards of professional excellence, it should mean that he or she has been recognized by their profession as a highly competent professional who is committed to maintaining those standards. What of the professional society and society itself? The professional society's main contribution to the success of the maritime industry will be in helping to provide engineers with the knowledge, the understanding, and the professional competence required by industry. However, a professional society, I believe, also has a responsibility to use its collective expertise for the benefit of society, the public who will use what the industry provides. Society has the right to expect that a professional society will require its members to act at all times with the high standard of professional competence and integrity. As a governing body, a professional society should regulate the professional activities of its members through a code of professional conduct. It's a key role, I believe, of the professional society to assist in providing engineers, providing industry with engineers that it needs today and in the future. But to achieve that, there must be high school leaders who wish to become the engineers of the future. The modern professional society has an important role to play in, in encouraging those future engineers, without which the maritime industry will not achieve its future success. And it can do this by providing greater understanding by society of the nature and the importance of the maritime industry and the careers it can offer. So, inclusion. In, in conclusion, ladies and gentlemen, the role of a professional society in promoting the success of the maritime industry is complex and wide-ranging. It should promote and facilitate the, the advancement of knowledge of and understanding which underpins the professional skills which industry requires. It should set standards of professional competence and integrity to be achieved by all its members. It should both assist and guide its members in achieving those standards, the standards that the institution has set both for academic achievement and for further for membership of the institution. It should guide and assist its members in achieving those standards, and it should seek to further understanding, to further the understanding and awareness of which society has of the profession of the maritime industry. And throughout, it must recognize and respond to the changing needs of the profession and the maritime industry, and implicitly the needs of its members, which it serves. As I hope I've demonstrated, the role of professional society is not an easy one, but it is a vital one in contributing to the success of the maritime industry. And if I can remind you at the start of my presentation, innovation is most certainly the key to the success of the maritime industry. But key to innovation is people. People with the knowledge, the understanding, and the professional skills which industry requires. Professional societies have an important role to provide, to play in providing such people. People that we call engineers. Thank you very much indeed for listening to me. Thank you, Mr. Trevor Bakris, for this very uh, many things keynote speech regarding the relationship between the industry, professional society, and the academia. So hereby, I would like to invite our chairman of uh, conference, Professor Dr. Adi Maimon, to present a, a talk about appreciation to our keynote speakers, Mr. Trevor Bakris.
coming out of them. Just <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now, um, now we have a uh, we we will start our panel sections. So uh, for information, uh, our panel, the first panel sections will be in uh, from from now to ten uh, twenties. So uh, this room will be sections two slash one for reliability and safety. In room A, we have the port management regulation and policy, and also in room B, we have uh, ship constructions and operations. So we may start our parallel sections right now. Uh, if you would like to go to another room, so please proceed. <laughs>